Hello and welcome to my Reason tutorial, the basics of how Reason works and setting up the preferences. So this is Reason 8. As you can see at the moment the screen's a bit cluttered. At the top here you have the mixer, in the middle here you have the rack, and at the bottom here you have the sequencer. Now that's how Reason works, it works off these three screens and the mixer which is based on an SSL mixer that you'll find in many professional studios throughout the world and a rack which is where all your instruments are placed um, and it's based on it's like a virtual emulation of a real life rack mount which you'll find in many studios in the world where you have a, instruments and effects devices in a in a tower like a rack mounted inside a rack called a rack mount of all these different instruments and devices and as like a real studio you can tab with reason and go to the back of the rack and you will be able to wire up CV audio um, and gate different things to all different kinds of instruments to create all different kinds of sounds and effects where wiring different things together and down the bottom here is the sequencer which is the primary window within Reason. It is like the main screen and the rack and the mixer are detached away from that if you so wish. Now if you detach, go up here to window and go detach main mixer, detach rack. Um, if you have three monitors they will then be able to be on each individual monitor which is a good thing. But I like to work that way in Reason. Before Reason 8 I've come up with a little issue here. Before Reason 8, I love to work that way, even though I've got one monitor. I love to work by detaching the three windows and then just going down the bottom here and then click on the window which I like or which I want. Um, but what they've done now is they've incorporated in Reason 8 a browser here. Click on instruments, you're in the br browser for the instruments there. You've got Thor, Subtractor, Maelstrom, etc. etc. And you can do what's called drag and drop. You can just drag a Thor in there. Um, back to instruments, drag a subtractor in there, and if you go to the rack, you will see now how there's an orange glow around the subtractor. Because that was the last instrument I dropped, the last instrument you place in, you drag in, um, has browser priority, which means it'll glow up orange over there where you go to browse your patches, and it's the priority for the browser patches. So there you can see all the subtractor patches. So I wanted a nice bass, guitar, for instance, to drag it into the... Just drag it in there like that. But when you've got the screen, three screens detached like I have, you can't... When you're on the rack, right, I don't want to go back to the sequencer to browse my patches when I do that. But now it reverts me straight back there. But what you can do is attach them back together again and go to view rack so now I'm in the rack again now you can see now you can see the browser there on the left hand side and then drag different ones in there bass cue um, yeah so I can see why they've done it in a way because the, the primary reason for detaching the three screens would be if you've got three monitors and if you've got three monitors then it won't be much hassle to just look at the monitor the sequencer monitor to see your patches but when you've got one monitor like I have and you like to have the screens detached it don't really work but uh, that's just you know take the rough with the smooth I suppose um, so that's how the reason works the three main windows mixer um, yeah mixer there as you can see there's two channel strips there in the mixer they weren't there before they correspond to the two devices you've now a added, Thor and a subtractor. Um, you can double click on there and change that to whatever you might want, like lead, like lead synth sound you might want. And then, uh, yeah, and then you've got that's your mixer, and you've got your rack, and you've got your sequencer. Now, uh, if you go back to the rack, that's where you can tab press tab key and it'll go to the back of the rack where you can wire different things together there um, wire all different kinds um, if I go to yeah the Thor 
and it'll go there and do different things with, with that there so go back to the sequencer in a second view sequencer and here at the bottom of the screen you'll see a new transport bar that they've put into reason 8 which a lot of people have complained about saying it doesn't look very good saying it's a bit bland it's very grey scale it's very grey um, but apparently I think they've done it to save on CPU usage which is also quite good if you've got the meter in your plane say for instance um, I don't know why that subtract wasn't playing now. Anyway, back to your Thor, and you can see it over here in your metering there. It's all grey, which isn't great, but you should be able to turn that off and on, I suppose, which would be a good thing. Over, over here, and that's where your BPM is. Set that to whatever you want by dragging the mouse up, or you can double click and type in a BPM. Um, that's your timing there, four four, which you can also double click on, or you can just drag with the mouse clicks on at the moment and pre-clicks on pre-click only works when you're on record so there's one bar counting which um, can be altered as well um, that's your timeline there as you can see it moves when I move the timeline it's moving by bar at the moment because it's set on bar if I set the snap to 16th it'll move by 16th notes um, and that's your quantize there quantize you can just click on that straight away to quantize something if it's selected in the sequencer and it'll select to whatever that is and you've got quantize record which means it'll quantize as you record and that's your level if I click there the click is on and that's the sound level there your volume for your click um, and you can also navigate through your track there using that little handy thing there just scrolling through and there's all your transport controls there you know left well, uh, rewind, forward, play, uh, stop, play, and record. And there's your loop on and off. Um, so that's basically your transport there. That's where your left and right locators, as you see here, your left and right locators are. So you can see where they are. Um, yeah, so let's get on to the preferences. What you'll want to do first, within reason, is you'll want to go to your edit menu go to preferences to general tab and uncheck this box here that says or untick this box that says load default sound in new devices that means that when you open any instrument or or device within reason no default patch will load in with it because it can be quite annoying because you've got to go and change it or you might not want to have a patch in there anyway you might want, want to make your own so that's a handy thing to do and everything else in there really just remain the same probably put it on empty the default song so it loads up empty I've got it on template at the moment the reason being is for some reason with Windows 7 I think it was an issue I'm not sure but when I detach the windows they don't it doesn't work right when I open up an empty template for some reason when I detach the windows anyway forget that you might want to adjust the um, mouse knob range to precise or very precise when you're trying to reach certain parameters if you're doing a YouTube tutorial for instance you sometimes can't get the exact numbers that someone's got in their devices because it won't it might be 127 and it'll only go 125 when you move the mouse up a slight bit on a parameter it'll go to 129 or something you can use shift to make it drag a bit slower and a little handy little tip there for you um, but then yeah then your audio you want to go into your sound card and select the sound card at the moment I've got my computer sound card selected so you so you can hear me play so you can hear me play the devices else usually I'd have it on ASIO but Behringer USB audio that goes through my uh, Behringer audio interface and then I can go through my headphones, my 2020 headphones and hear everything properly through there and it also stops all latency so you'll want to select your ASIO drivers for that but at the moment I've got it on DX primary sound driver and then the next thing you really want to do is go to your control services and select your MIDI keyboard I've got my M audio option 61 MIDI keyboard selected um, and then as you can see it's ticked it's working um, that's about it for now uh, so that's how you the basics of reason 8 in, a, in brief and how to set up your preferences thank you for watching cheers